Good morning. Welcome to our 9 o'clock worship service. The first opportunity we've had to worship together in the new year. Thank you for being here, being part of starting out our uh, new year right. Worshiping God as a people. Thank you for being here. If you haven't filled out an attendance card, I encourage you to do that. And um, pass that to any aisle and the uh, gentleman will come through in just a moment and pick those up. Um, encourage you also to uh, take one of these home with you today. Lots of news, activities, announcements, uh, ways that you can start out your new year right. Uh, serving others, ministering to others, and uh, building up the kingdom of God. So uh, take one of these home with you as well. <clears throat> Exciting to be together this morning. I'd like to let's stand as we go. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heaven, praise His name, praise Jehovah, in the Oh, 
God, as we focus on worship, we pray, Father, that you give us a heart for it today, that we are here for the right reasons, Father, that we praise you and lift you up in all that we do. We acknowledge you for who you are, for your place in our life, Father, and we praise you for what you have done for us. We thank you so much for this opportunity to be together. Father, we thank you so much for the works that are occurring here at this church, and we pray as we enter into a new year that you give, give us all renewed strength for service to you, service to you through our service to this church, this congregation, and Father, for our service to the lost this year. Give us a heart and a vision for those who are outside of relationship with you, Father, and help us to reach out to them in every way that we can in the coming year. Father, as we focus on worship this morning, we pray that you're with uh, our speaker, that you give him true inspiration this hour to bring us the message that we need to strengthen us and edify us and to give us courage to go forward and do your will in the coming days ahead in this year. Father, we pray to you this morning from a spirit of, of thankfulness, thankful for new births, that have occurred recently and for those that are on the way, for new life in Christ that has occurred by decisions to put you on in baptism that have occurred recently, Father, and we praise you for those. May we lift up those newly born children and those newly born Christians in a way that pleases you and that they feel supported by folks who love them as family. Father, give us an opportunity to go forward this year with that spirit as a beginning point for joy and positivity for your sake going forward. Father, we live in difficult times, and we pray that you're with our country and our leadership and that you uh, bless us in ways that we can't even see. Father, be with us as we worship. Give us truly a place and a heart for it. Be with those this morning who are sick, who, who need your help and care, uh, especially those that, that are on our mind today for not being with us at the beginning of a new year, and those that we know about from our list and our bulletin. Father, we just lift them up to you at this time. We ask for healing beyond our comprehension, but consistent with your will, and for opportunity to be in fellowship again with those folks going forward. We thank you for the blessings of healing that you've shown us and those that have gotten off of our list, Father, for a prayer requests, and we know that you will continue to work in their lives, and we're thankful for that. Father, as we worship, give us truly uh, an acknowledgement and an awe for our 
Savior and our brother and our Lord and help us to praise you and to acknowledge Jesus in all that we do. Give us a good day today. In Christ's name, amen. Focus our minds on the supper this morning. Let's sing all three verses of this song in the chorus once again. <laughs> oh, in the great DNA. This is the first day of a new year, and uh, that always gives me some excitement. I don't know if you're like me, but I, I'm one of those that tend to think about New Year's resolutions. I don't always follow through with them, but it's just a good opportunity. Um, and this is kind of a unique day because it only once every seven years, the first falls on a Sunday. That's where we are today, so that's kind of a unique opportunity. It's something about a new beginning, and God is all about new beginnings. We see it all through Scripture. And I was thinking about the early church. When they would meet, uh, they would likely observe the, the Sabbath on that Saturday, and then every single week, on the first day of the week, they would get together to celebrate, to worship, to encourage each other, to start a new week. They wanted a new beginning, and so they, they used that opportunity, that new beginning, to encourage each other. And that's what we still do today. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So not only do we have an opportunity to meet every week, every morning the grace of God is new to all of us. We get up and as we start our day, we have an opportunity to walk in the grace of our Savior. That's an amazing thought. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all our sin. And the word there has a meaning of continual clean, cleansing, not just every week or every day. If we walk in Christ and rest in his salvation, we have a new beginning every moment. Despite our failures and, and the ways that we make mistakes and mess up, we are continually renewed in Christ. This morning, this is why we come around the table. If we are in Christ, we are continually renewed. We don't have to stay where we were or where we are. We know that God continuously renews us, and we have a new beginning in Him every moment. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful 
for your son Jesus. We are so thankful for the blessing of new beginnings that he gives us. Father, he has cleansed us of our sin. That is a thought that is beyond words. As we come this morning, we remember the body that he took on, that he wore throughout his life, and that he lay on that cross as he died for us. We pray, Father, that as we think about that blessing, that our hearts and minds would be turned to you and we would be full of humility and gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow together again. Father, again, as we come to you, we just want to express our thanks to you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, for the love that Jesus had for us in pouring out his innocent blood to cover our guilty lives. Father, we are humbled by that, and we are so thankful for that tremendous blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's pray. Our Father, we are so richly blessed in every way imaginable. Each and every day when we wake up, you bless us more than we can deserve, more than we can expect. And we just pray now that as we have an opportunity that you will purpose in our hearts to give back a portion of what we've been given. In Christ's name, amen. If you'd like to, let's stand as we sing. I can still lose my transition. Oh! 
Good morning. Hopefully you didn't stay up too late last night. I'm sure some of you did. We did at our house. I told everyone we're going to bed before midnight. Got my whole crew here. We were all in one house. I ended up going to bed at 1 o'clock, I think. But since I have all my kids here, it's going to take a while this morning. Y'all get ready. Did you bring notepads, pens? It is good to be here. As Daniel said, we've turned the page. We've closed a year out. We're starting a brand new one. How exciting is that? You know, I think back to last year, and a lot of great things happened last year. Um, For example, I heard that the Washington Street Church of Christ got a new preacher. That's a good thing. The old preacher is here today. Brother Jim, and uh, back when uh, Adam was preaching a few weeks ago, Jim and I were both here, and Jim was like, well, what you going to do this morning? I said, I'm going to be a critic this morning. (laughs) So, you know, that's what you get to do if you're not preaching, right? Be a critic. And so, uh, anyway, but uh, I thought it was interesting because Amanda, after church, said three preachers in the building at one time, and it didn't fall in. I mean, how how crazy was that? But... uh, It is good to be here today. Uh, A lot of great things did happen last year. You know, we gained some new family members here at Washington Street. How wonderful was that? You know, but as is true most years, we've also lost some folks that were close to this place and close to you, and and, uh, some of you lost family members that um, were unexpected, and that's going to happen again this year, sadly. Um, as is the case most of the time. We gain people, we lose people. You know, in our home, we ha- actually had the opportunity, not necessarily in our home, in our family, of uh, getting two babies this year. So how wonderful was that? Yes, I'm married to a grandma. That's true. And, uh, but I know many of you uh, have experienced the, the uh, beauty of new life in the family, but Uh, Again, as has been stated, you know, there are those moments of sadness where, you know, uh, things break our hearts. In in this past year, I know you had some ups and downs. There were some positive things that happened in your family or in this church family. And and then there are also also some things that happened that let us down or that that somewhat break our hearts uh, just from a relationship standpoint. And uh, I know that that's true Uh, That was true in 2022, and it will be true in 2023. We're going to have some ups and downs in this year. Um, Some of you have some exciting things that happened, whether it was a new job or uh, whether it was uh, something that came your way uh, unexpected, but nonetheless was an amazing blessing, and you could just see God's uh, hands all over it. And how awesome was that? And that's going to happen this year as well. I want, to, I want you to think about a couple of things because as we embark on, on this new year, God has at least at this point blessed us with turning the page on the calendar and has helped us to close the door to 2022. He, he also uh, has given us at least the first day of this new year. And uh, as Daniel mentioned a moment ago, you know, there's always those anticipations, right, of Uh, resolutions. How many of you are resolution people? Not very many of you. Okay, Daniel, you might be alone. You're an island to yourself, buddy. Uh, But some of you are resolution people. You're just not raising your hand. Uh, Let me ask it this way, though. How many of you are resolution keepers? Oh, man, it just narrowed and slimmed very quickly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always that great anticipation, right? It's a wonderful idea that, that we are going to set resolutions. We're going to meet those goals. I mean, we're going to walk 100,000 miles this next year, right? We're going to eat so much better. We're going to use all of those essential oils. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I stepped all over myself one of the first two sermons talking about uh, essential oils. <laughs> we won't go into that. Anyway... Uh, Jesus used them, all right? There you go. So that's enough of that. Uh, but, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to have all these resolutions. We're going to do all these wonderful things. And, and 2023, I mean, from the viewpoint right here, it's going to be great, right? 
We've got all these grand dreams. We've got this beautiful vision. We know what's going to happen, and it's going to happen exactly the way that we plan it. I mean, everything, God wants us to be blessed, and He wants us to prosper, and He wants our soul to prosper, and everything's just going to fall into place, and I mean, the heavens are going to open, and the light's going to shine right down on you, and your year in 2023 is going to be amazing. Now, how many of you believe that? Now, a lot of us anticipate that. But just because we're Christian doesn't mean that we are exempt from everything else that's happening in the world, right? We're not that naive. We're not naive to believe that, you know, in this brand new year, we're not going to experience some difficulty and some ups and downs. No, we know that we're like everyone else in the world in that regard. We do have Christ. We do have the Word of God. We have the Spirit dwelling within us. So that automatically, doesn't it, gives us a step up when we face those moments? Doesn't that automatically help us to be blessed in a better way? What does God have in store for us, you know? Um, I I love those passages in Scripture. You know, I call them T-shirt Scriptures, right? You know, contextually, they don't really mean what we say they mean, but they look great on a T-shirt. And I, and I believe all of those wonderful scriptures are just going to come true for us, and that's the way it's going to be. Well, I think the reality is we all understand and know that life can be tough. So what do we need in this new year? How do we have a blessed new year? Well, as we're looking forward to this new year, you know, some people are automatically going to be defeated. And that's sad to say, but it's true. There are some people who have that Eeyore complex. You remember Winnie the Pooh, the little donkey Eeyore? You know, nobody cares about me. And that's going to be the outlook. I mean, starting the first day of the year, some people are just going to, they're all automatically going to be defeated because they, that is how they feel that, that God feels about them because that's the way everyone else feels about them. Right? And so in their minds, they're all, already defeated. I could never do that. I could never grow in that way. I could never step out in faith and accomplish that good thing. And so, so yeah, I mean, some people in this brand new year are going to struggle with that Eeyore complex that no one really cares and God doesn't appear to care either because my life is not what I thought it should be. I think one of the things we have to at least focus on and think about, I loved what Daniel said a moment ago about how every... You know, every day is a blessing. Every moment is a renewal, in a sense. And I think that's the perspective. Psalm 118, verse 24. How many of you know that verse? Psalm 118, 24. This is the day. Help me out. The Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day. Paul Paul stated in 1 Corinthians, he, he talked about, I die daily. You wake up and you say, you know, today's not going to be for Charles or today's not going to be for you. It's going to be for God because he has given me another wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made. This day, regardless of what that day will bring, regardless of what uh, is is, uh, on the shoulders from the night before or the week before, this is a brand new day that God has given us. And what a perspective to have for life, regardless of what type of year you had last year, it doesn't mean that that's the kind of year you're going to have this year. It might very well be that some changes need to be made, some renewal needs to happen, whether it's repentance from an old way of life or a sin that has uh, certainly shackled you last year. It, it could be that, that you are doing the best you can and you feel like things are going well, you just want to be better, you want to be stronger. You want to be more spiritual. And yes, that takes a perspective of renewal as well. I love what John says in uh, 3 John, verses 2 through 4. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when uh, brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. You know, God gave us his word for a number of reasons, right? We believe that. God, God gave his word to help us to understand and know some things about his nature, 
about who he is. You remember Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6, we must believe that he is. And so his word certainly is descriptive. Uh, it doesn't tell all the story of who God is, but it gives us uh, some about his character, about his nature. He's given us his word also to know about salvation, right? To, to know about the wonderful story of Jesus. And then, and then encourages us to live out the story of Jesus every day after we commit our lives to him. But he gave us his word to be truth for us, to uh, be a stability for us in a very uncertain and difficult life. And that truth is what we are to walk by, and James, uh, John was certainly talking about that. In, in John's gospel account, in, uh, in, in John chapter 13, I actually put Acts 13, should be John 13, verses 15 through 17. I want you to notice what John says in his gospel account. Because here he says, I have given you an example that you should follow. Now let's just pause for a moment. We've talked a little bit about this uh, in some classes. You know, in John chapter 13, verse 1, Jesus knew that his hour had come. He knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that, that Calvary was going to be uh, the final uh, uh, point for him to accomplish what God had sent him here for. That dying for us and for our sins with his blood he would purchase our salvation. And so in John chapter 13, he knows he's going to the cross. He's there with his disciples in John 13, uh, in that upper room. He's there with them in that upper room. And as a result, uh, some things happen. Now we focus on certain aspects. Maybe we focus more on, you know, the foot washing. And what does all that mean? And how does that apply to us in the 21st century? And, and maybe we're thinking about, you know, it, it's the fact that Peter ultimately will deny Jesus or Judas will betray him. Maybe you get to verses 34 and 35 and we start to focus on, you know, uh, the, the love that we're to have for one another and that all, everyone's going to know that we belong to him because we love one another. And this is a new commandment in a sense because Jesus has now changed the dynamic. It's no longer loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Now it's you, we love our neighbor the way we love Jesus. And there's a lot to focus on. But in these verses, he says, I've given you an example that you should follow in verse 15. Do as I have done to you. What did Jesus do from the first moment until this one? He did nothing but serve and love and help. In verse 16, I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more uh, important than one who sends the message. Now these things, and now you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. God wants us to have an active faith. He wants us to serve. Really, I think that's the whole message of his life. Right? Matthew 20, verse 28. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. And so what do we understand? We, we know that Jesus came to be a servant. What does God want us to be? Servants. Right? And so he says, it's one thing to have a head knowledge, to, to actually understand and know. It's a totally different thing to have a heart knowledge where that is uh, seen by action where we love on people and we serve people and we help people. So let me just give you four quick words as we think about God wanting us to have an act of faith. Maybe these four words as we kind of wrap them up this morning, you know, maybe they will help us, right? They will help us to have a blessed new year. How do you do it? Well, I think uh, one of the first things that we do is we believe. We believe. Now, there's an interesting passage uh, that I want to share at the beginning here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you've got a Bible, I want you to look there with me for a moment. It's really an interesting uh, statement. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, you know, Paul's talking about how we can live a faithful life even in the midst of struggle. And, and this little interesting verse has a beautiful nugget of truth in it as we think about believing in this brand new year. And some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, I already believe, okay? Yeah, I know you believe in Jesus. You know, I know you believe that he came to die for your sins and to save you, but what else do you believe? And how does that help you every day in your walk with him? Well, this passage that Paul shares in verse 13 of 2 Corinthians 4, and since we have the same spirit of faith, these were like-minded brethren, right? 
according to what is written. If you want to underline that, Paul's basing his faith. Yes, we could look at Paul and say Paul had uh, the spirit that helped him in in a different way uh, in the sense that it, it helped him to understand and know what God wanted. You know, it helped him to go into places where uh, God wanted him to go to take the gospel. And yet all that would be true. But Paul sort of, you know, sets the foundation here. And I think that that's true for me and you, right? That we need to also uh, understand that we have to stand on what is written. But it's this statement right here, and it's in mine at least, it's in quotations. I believe, and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord will also raise, up, uh, with Jesus, raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you, for all things are for your sakes that, the great, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to God. Now, what's interesting is he attaches what he says to what happened to Jesus. You think there were a lot of people who, as they were walking through that moment, thought this is the worst thing in the world? Now, they couldn't see the other side. They couldn't see the grander picture that God had in store for our salvation. But in that moment, right, in that moment, this phrase that Paul states, he attaches to Jesus. How many people thought that that was the worst thing until Sunday morning came along and Jesus was resurrected? And I think that that's something we have to hold on to is that by the same power, Mark chapter 1, verse 4 uh, where Jesus, I'm, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 1, by the same power that God raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that's at work in me and you. How awesome is that? So now let's think about the phrase for just a moment. I believe, therefore I speak. We believe, therefore we speak. It, even in the midst of difficulty, we have this faith in us. We have this faith that we're standing on, that even though we're walking through some difficult times, we're still going to believe and speak what we know is true regardless of the circumstances. I want you to think about it. Is God a good God today? Anyone? Yes? How many of you believe that? Raise your hand if you believe God's a good God today. Well, what happens tomorrow when life's difficult? Is He, is he still good? You see, even in those difficult days, we still have to speak to His goodness and His grace and His power and His love. God has given us everything that we need in this brand new year. And I want you to think about that. And He wants us to rejoice. Certainly in 2 Peter 1, verses 2 through 4, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus as His divine power has given us all things. Now get this, He's given us all things that pertain to life. That's everything we're going to experience in 2023. And to godliness, how we can be spiritual people in 2023 through the knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and virtue, by which he has given to us exceeding and precious promises, uh, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through its lust. So I want you to, as you think about believe, I want you to rejoice in the fact that, that he's given us what we need. Think about that. He's given us, number one, power to save us, right? Isn't that what the Hebrew writer says in chapter 7, verse 25? He is able to save forever those who draw near to Him. Certainly draw near to God through Him. Yeah, He's able to save us. Or maybe it's the strength that we need to understand that He gives us in this new year for those who believe. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things, help me out, through Christ who... Do we believe that? I mean, He, He can strengthen us. Now, all things, I think, is important for that context. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, there are no limits to life. You know, there, there was a time where I could dunk a basketball. I hate to tell you, it doesn't matter how much I believe in Jesus today, that ain't happening again, right? It's not happening. I mean, I barely can walk across the parking lot, you know. So some things just aren't going to happen. But within the realm of your spiritual life and within, within the realm of Christ doing for you what God intends for Him to do, 
There are no limits. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His power to protect us, Joshua 1 verse 9. Tapping back into the Old Testament right here, right? Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go? Was that only true for Joshua as he's leading the people of God toward the promised land? Was that only true of him? Or is that also true for us? You know that Great Commission we quoted all the time? We had some lessons back a few months ago on how we are to be more active in our faith with sharing it with others. You know Matthew 28, 18 through 20. What's the last part in verse 20? And I'm with you always. If you feel like God is not with you, my question for you is, who moved? Because God did not. He is with you. And His power to provide. You know, I love the psalm, Psalm 23. One of the more comforting psalms. One of the most popular passages, well-known passages in all of Scripture. You know the first part of it? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. His power to provide. God is our shepherd who can provide. But not only that, let's talk about how we not only believe, but we also behave. Now, this could be tough depending on the direction. We have to actually be good in this new year, right? No, that's not necessarily what I'm referring to, although I do want you to be good, and God does too. But I want you to think about this. Christianity is a religion of doing, right? It's a religion of doing. As a matter of fact, what does James, the brother of Jesus, say in James chapter 1, verse 22? Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes, there, 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 come, there is a moment where we believe it starts with the reasoning and the logic and the knowledge But ultimately, that has to be factored in when the heart is engaged that we put into action what we believe. I I don't mean to step on anyone's toes toes here, but if you do not have an active faith, what do you really have? Because all over the Scriptures, we read our Savior, the one that we're following, we're disciples of Jesus, was, was active in His faith. And you and I need to be active in our faith. Living out. What's the old adage? Actions speak louder than words. And certainly that's true. We have to understand that, you know, our behavior, our actions need to certainly be in line with what we believe. We need to behave in the way that we believe. In our daily life, as a matter of fact, in Matthew 5, 16, you you know, we need to behave in our daily life, Right? Let your light so shine, right? Isn't that what Jesus said? You know, that's a daily daily, uh, shining, right? We need to wake up every day and let our light shine, right? Uh, That's in our daily life. Uh, In our witness before the world. Isn't that what Jesus is saying? Let your light so shine before others, right? Every one of us are living before someone else. And they're watching us. And it matters. But he said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and what? Yeah, you're a witness for God to bring glory to Him. And then also in our church, uh, certainly we need to understand that God wants us and expects us to behave in certain ways right here at church. What did Paul write to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15? But if I'm long in coming, that you may know how you should behave yourselves in the house of God, which is the church, the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Right here, what we say, what we do must be on the foundation of truth, but this is God's house. Not not meaning this building. Not meaning this building. This is just sticks and mortar. Right? Some paint. This is just a building. This building is only a building. What is the church? Who is the church? 
If you raise your hand right now, you are the church. You know, it's funny, some people have a, a, a thought process about a building and then take so little concern about how they're living. God's more concerned about how we live than He is about anything concerning this building. We are the house of God as a called out group of people. Not only believe and not only behave, but also beware. I think, I think we need to be cautious in this new year, right? We need to be cautious in this new year. And the scriptures, really, there's a lot more than I will even share here. Uh, there's a, there, are, there are a number of scriptures that talk about, you know, you need to be aware, you need to be alert, you need to be careful. You need to pay attention. You need to do what God wants you to do. Over and over and over, the idea to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Certainly that's what God wants us to do. And, and, and the Word of God gives us examples of different warnings. First of all, of deception, deceptive people. You know, how, how many of you have been fooled in 2022? Raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of us have, right? We were deceived, you know? That political candidate we thought was the greatest thing since peanut butter turned out not to be, right? You know, maybe buying into Bitcoin wasn't such a great idea. Some of you are going, wait a minute. I thought that was a good thing. <laughs> I want you to think about just what, you know, we can take it to a more personal level. How many of you placed a lot of trust and faith into an, in an individual that turned out not to be who you thought he or she was, really? The Bible in Colossians 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man ensnares you through the philosophy and empty deception after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the wor world, and not after Christ. Be careful. But not only that, of the snares of the devil. Right? Do you think Satan's active? Can I just say one thing? You, do you know what every one of us in here possess, what we have, what we own? Everyone in here has one. What is it? A soul. You know, that thing's pretty important. It's so important that not only is, did Jesus fight for it, you know who else is fighting for it? That says what you have is extremely important. So much so that not only did Jesus go to the cross and die for it, but Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5 verse 8, for it. Your soul. Young people, listen up. I think at times young people are so haphazard with their life that they don't realize that the most important thing they have, the world and Satan, is fighting for. And I want you to understand it's precious. You hold on to it. In this new year, decide to have a mentality that you want to love God more than you love people. That you love Jesus more than you love any man. But I think the other thing we have to be careful with is ourselves. We are our own worst enemy at times, are we not? We are. And it's true. In Luke chapter 12, verse 15, and, and, and he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Well, who's the one making those choices about what they buy? what they choose to place uh, importance on, the individual. You know, we have to be careful. Sometimes I think we let our feelings run away with us. We let our emotions run away with us. And, and we could be our own worst enemy. And, and then number four, I think not only would we think about believing and behaving and certainly to beware, be, uh, to beware but also understand this word. And this might be one of the more important words of the four that I've shared this morning. You, you know, everyone needs a place to belong. Do you agree with that? You, you know, for many people, maybe not for you, maybe not for me, for many people, they're out there living a life of loneliness. And, and if they could stand up here in front of this microphone this morning and, and speak to you, you know what they would say is, I I'm lonely. I need a place to belong. You, do you understand and realize one of your greatest needs is to be loved? And, and one of the second greatest needs is to be able to love someone else? 
And you know right here in the church, God brings those two things together. He, he gives us the opportunity as a church family to love you, and He gives you the opportunity to love us as a church family. The important thing is to belong. Someone said it's impossible for anyone to genuine, genuinely be happy without a sense of belonging. And I think there's some truth to that. Every child of God can rejoice in the blessing of belonging, number one, to Christ. Is there a greater person to belong to than Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. You've been purchased for a price. Jesus purchased your salvation and mine. Belonging to the church... And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. He added to a group of people who are... Isn't it great to be a group of people who are saved by the grace of God? Absolutely. Then there is absolutely no separating Christ from His church. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Paul was talking to a group of elders from Ephesus, and he said, Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd, get this, the church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. Who's the He and His? Jesus Christ. He purchased the church. Don't ever think the church of Christ is not. Important. You cannot separate Christ from His church. He gave His blood for her. You know, as we think about this brand new year and we think about these words and think about all that's going to happen, you know, it could be a little overwhelming to think about some of the difficulties of life and to think about some of the challenges that we're going to face. It can be. It can be overwhelming. You know, you know they say the journey of a thousand miles starts with what? Yeah, we've been given one day today. So don't try to swallow the whole year in one day, right? You know how to eat a big elephant? One bite at a time. Isn't that true? You know what? We just have one day. Let's take care of our faith. Let's believe what we're supposed to. Let's behave in the way we're supposed to. Let's beware and be cautious. And let's also understand that we've got a beautiful family to belong to. If you are not a part of God's family, you are missing the greatest joy in all the world. To be covered by the blood of Jesus and to be added to His group, His family, it's the greatest thing. If you need to respond to Him, I encourage you to do that this morning as together we stand. And as we stand. There's a stirring deep within me, could it be my time has come, when I see my gracious Savior face to face with all his son, is that his voice I am hearing, come away my precious one, is he calling me?
have no one currently in the hospital. And of course, we express our sympathy to the family of Helen Price. Celebration of life was held on Thursday, December 29th. Would you bow with me, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this great privilege we've had to come together to worship you and to hear a portion of your word. May the seed that has been sown into our hearts, Father, take root and according to your will, bear much fruit for the kingdom. We pray to your Heavenly Father, great healing for those who are sick, tremendous comfort from your spirit for those who are grieving. And as we face this new year, dear Heavenly Father, we know you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. 